Hey guys and welcome back. So in today's video I want to show you a project I've been working on for the past couple days which is an AI teaching itself how to play Flappy Bird. Now I know I'm definitely not the first person to make this and I've taken a lot of inspiration from other YouTubers like CodeBullet and seeing their videos and how they've tried to do this. I took this as a challenge for myself trying to do this without looking at any of their code and you guys are going to see how it turned out today. So right now you're witnessing the AI train itself on how to play the game of Flappy Bird. Now the way that this works is that it starts off completely random, having absolutely no idea what to do and how the game even operates. And after many generations of slowly learning and slowly getting better, it finally picks up on patterns and figures out what it can do to progress further in the level. Now this uses something called a genetic algorithm, and the exact genetic algorithm I use is called NEAT. Now that stands for Neuro Evolution of Augmenting Topologies, and we're going to get into all those details later in the video and talk about exactly how it works. But essentially, after a few generations, the AI starts to get exponentially better, until eventually it reaches a point where it can't be beat, and it can beat the level infinitely and keep going without ever hitting a pipe. Now to me, this is super fascinating, so I'm just going to play a few clips and let you guys witness how this actually works. So after about 13 generations, you can see we've got a pretty good AI, and chances are that this guy will be able to make it through the level infinitely without ever hitting a pipe. Now how does this work and how are we able to train an AI so quickly? Well that's what I'm going to talk about now, and I'm going to start explaining how this whole algorithm and everything works. Oh, and after about an hour of running this program, this is what the AI was able to accomplish, a score of upwards of a thousand, and I just ended up terminating the program at that point. Now before we can start to understand how the NEAT algorithm works, we need to talk about neural networks. Now neural networks come in what we call layers, and the first layer to talk about here is the input layer. Now the input layer is what is the information to our network. It's what the network actually knows and what it sees. You can almost think of it as the eyes of the AI. Now let's look at the frame on the right side of our screen here. Based on this frame, we need some way and some pieces of information that we can feed to our neural network so that it knows what's going on. Now for me, the three pieces of information I thought would be valuable is the position of the bird and the position of the two pipes, or actually the distance between the bird, the top pipe, and the distance between the bird and the bottom pipe. This way our AI has some idea where it is in the level and where the next pipes are that are coming up. Now once we have this input information, we need some way to transport it into an output, and this is where the output layer comes in. Now each neural network has both one input layer and one output layer, and this output layer is going to tell our AI what to do. In our case, we need to know whether we're going to jump or not. So we'll use one output neuron to represent the decision of jumping or not jumping. And this is how we're going to get our output from the neural network. What we're going to do is we're going to give some values to our input, so to our input neurons, whatever those values are that we've decided. Then they're going to pass that value somehow, which I'm going to talk about in a second, to this output neuron. And depending on the value of this output neuron, we're either going to jump or not jump. All right, so how do we pass these values? Well, this is where we use something called connections and weights. So essentially, in this very basic example, each of our input neurons are going to be connected to our output neuron using one connection. So these lines that just showed up on the screen. And each of these connections have what's called a weight. Now a weight is simply a number that represents how strong or how weak this connection is. And these are the numbers that we're going to tweak to make our AI better or I guess make it worse in some cases. So what we're going to do when we pass our values to our input neurons, so our bird Y, the top of the pipe, and the bottom of the pipe, is we're going to feed those through our neural network. This is why it's called a feed forward neural network. They're going to have a weight applied to them, and then they're going to be passed to our output neuron where some more things can happen. So we're going to take what's called a weighted sum. Now a weighted sum means we're going to take each weight and multiply it by its corresponding input value. So on input neuron 1, which is going to be our bird y position, we're going to take whatever that weight value is and multiply it by bird y. Then we're going to add it to whatever the distance between our bird and our pipe is, um, multiplied by the next weight, and so on. And you can see that showing up right now. Now once that happens and we get those values at our output neuron, we're going to apply two more operations to it. And the first operation is something called a bias. We're actually going to add what's called a bias. Now a bias is simply a number that is going to allow us to kind of tweak our neural network in another way. 
You can almost think of it as a y-intercept on a very basic graph. This will just allow us to kind of move our network up and down a little bit and just shift it into the right position. So if these weights don't quite do the trick, this bias should hopefully help us kind of adjust the network and, and make it in the right dimensional space. I don't want to go too complicated with the math here. So anyways, we're going to add this bias to our weighted sum. And now we're going to apply what we call an activation function to this whole thing. Now this activation function simply allows us to get our value for this output neuron between two set numbers. And this is really useful because it allows us to check whether or not, you know, an, it's this number or it's closest to this number. So we know whether to jump or not to jump. And in this case, I'm using an activation function called tan h. Now there's tons of other ones. You have sigmoid, you have rel u, you have all other kinds of activation functions, but the tan h function is going to squish whatever this value is in between the value of negative one and one. So this is what the tan h function looks like. You can see that the larger negative the number, the closest negative, the closer to negative one it's going to be. And the larger positive the number, the closer to one it's going to be. And anything in between is kind of going to be squished in between negative one and one and maybe kind of close to zero. And that's the way that tan h works. So based on this, I'm actually able to now feed some values to my neural network, get that output neuron, see what it is, and then compare that to whatever criteria I want. So in this case, I'm going to say if this neural network has an output value of greater than 0.5, I'm going to jump. Otherwise, I'm not going to jump. And that's exactly what I've done in the code here to get this bird to actually move and to create this AI. Now, you're probably wondering how we come up with these weights and biases. And the answer is we don't. We let the computer do it for us. Now, what I've decided to use to do this is an algorithm called NEAT. Now, there's lots of other ways to do this for a neural network, but for a game like Flappy Bird, this makes a lot of sense, and you're going to understand why after I explain it. NEAT stands for Neural Evolution of Augmenting Topologies, and essentially it's inspired on natural selection. And natural selection is kind of a process of generations continually learning and getting better and better and better until eventually they get as good as they can get. Now that's exactly what we do here with our flappy birds, as you guys have already seen through some of the simulations. We're going to start with an observation, and that observation is we have no idea what the correct number for the weights and biases of our birds should be. There's no way to kind of figure that out without doing tons of different tests. So what we do is we say, okay, we don't know. So we'll start by creating a population of birds. And this population is going to start off completely random. And each population is going to consist of, well, a bird and a neural network that controls that bird. Now, this neural network is going to start with random weights and random biases. And what we're going to do is we're going to test all of these neural networks on our level or on our game and see how well they do we're going to evaluate what we call their fitness. Now, fitness is different depending on what game you're playing. In Flappy Bird, the way that we determine how well a bird did is how far it progressed in the level. You can do that in a few different ways, but I've decided to just say every frame it moves forward without dying or without losing, it gets another point, and that's going to be its fitness score. So what we're going to do is at the end of the simulation, when all of our birds have died, we're going to see which ones performed the best in this set of population. We're going to take those birds, a certain percentage of them, and we're going to breed them and mutate them to create a brand new population of 100 new birds. And we're going to get rid of all of the other birds that did poorly. So now what we have is we have some offspring from the best birds from the last generation. And we hope that these birds are going to perform better than the previous generation because they come from the best of that previous generation. Now, if you're interested in learning how NEAT actually breeds and mutates these neural networks, then I have left a link down below to the original NEAT paper. It's worth noting that I'm oversimplifying almost everything here, so if you're interested in learning more about the technical and specific details, I definitely recommend you check that out. Now this has been a little bit of a different video than what I usually do and if you guys like this style of presentation and of teaching, definitely let me know in the comments down below because I can start implementing it more into the channel. Now with that being said, this video has taken a crazy amount of time to make so I'd really appreciate it that if you enjoyed it and if you learned a little bit, you hit the like button down below and even subscribe to the channel if you're not already. With that being said, I post all kinds of Python videos and this entire project was actually programmed using Python. I used a module called Pygame and a Py Python module called Neat Python, which is actually how I did all of this AI. And if you go ahead and look at the code down below using my GitHub link there, you'll see that this is actually pretty simple to do in that it's not crazy complicated. 
there's a few things you have to tweak and mess with and it was a bit of a learning curve for me but if you're interested in getting into ai and kind of seeing how this works i will probably be making a tutorial about this in the future so make sure you're subscribed and stay tuned for that so finally if you guys enjoyed the video please 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 hit the thumbs up button down below it really helps me out and even just leave a comment and let me know what you most liked about it or what you want to see in the future on the channel so with that being said go follow my twitter go follow my instagram join the discord and i will see you guys in another video